Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at HP's stocking stuffer PC, the Stream 11. This is a $200 Windows computer, and we've looked at the prior two generations of this product, and they improve it slightly each year. Uh, this one has a pretty big improvement because although it has the same Celeron N3050 processor as last year's version, they doubled the memory from two gigabytes to four gigabytes, so it might do better with multitasking and a few other things, especially as apps get more demanding. So it was nice to see the RAM double for the same price. So if you're in the market for this computer, you might still see last year's version available for around the same price. Uh, even if it's a couple dollars more, get this one because the RAM is definitely going to make a difference in performance, as you'll see on some of our benchmarks in just a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is something I purchased myself with my own funds. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into the hardware here and see what we got. 11.6 inch display. This is pretty much the same screen as they had last Last year. Uh, right now under my studio lights, the uh, casing of the computer here is uh, blowing out the display a bit, but it does look fine uh, when you're looking at it, especially when it's plugged in, it'll get a little brighter uh, when you're not on the battery. Uh, 1366 by 768, that's a 720p display. There's a 14 inch version of this laptop. It is essentially the same exact computer, even down to the screen resolution. So they take the 720p display and blow it up to 14 inches, which means things get bigger uh, than what you see on here, but they don't look all that much better because it's 720p on a much larger display. So uh, if you don't need the larger display, this one will actually look better and they'll perform the same because they have the same guts inside. Again, we got that Intel Celeron N3050 processor at 1.6 gigahertz, four gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, unfortunately. So you're still a little strapped on uh, internal storage. 15 gigabytes or so is available at the time that you boot the computer up, although they do have Office 365 already installed and you get a year subscription to that service as part of the deal. Another improvement over the prior version is they bumped up the wireless technology. Also, it's running with a two by two wireless AC radio, much faster than prior generations. Although I don't think this computer is fast enough to really handle all of it, but you'll get the latest wireless technology. It'll work on both the five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless spectrum. Uh, it weighs about 2.6 pounds, so pretty lightweight. That's about 1.2 kilograms. So not too heavy on uh, that front there. So definitely uh, portable if you are looking to carry it around or have a kid carry it around. Nice textured grip here on the casing. There's also a purple one available called Violet Purple. Uh, so if you don't like the blue here, you can go for the uh, other color. I'm a pretty big fan of the keyboards on these. I like the keyboard in the prior iterations. This one feels largely the same. I like the key spacing. I like the travel on them. It really feels like a very comfortable keyboard, uh, more so than I've seen in many other computers at this price point. So I think HP has got the keyboard layout figured out and they didn't really change it all that much, primarily because they didn't have to. It really is, I was working three years ago or two years ago and it's still working today. Uh, the trackpad feels a little spongier to me though. So I'm not as uh, crazy about the trackpad. It kind of moves a little bit even when you just apply uh, just a slight amount of pressure to the trackpad. So I like my trackpads to just give me a firm click and nothing else. This one feels again a little spongier than uh, prior iterations have, ha have felt. Uh, on the side here, you've got a Kensington lock for locking it down on a desk. USB 2.0 over here for slower devices like keyboards and mice and that kind of thing. You have a combo headset microphone jack on this side. Over here, you've got a full-size HDMI port so you can plug it into an external display and kind of use it as a desktop computer. I remember you're dealing with a $200 PC here, so although it has more memory than before, it's still not uh, quite up to what you might expect out of a desktop, but you have that option if you wish. USB 3.0 over here for connecting faster devices like hard drives, and you also have a micro SD card slot here for popping in uh, external storage that you can carry around with you because those cards go all the way into that slot. Uh, so if you want, you can get like 128 gigabyte card and store your media on there so you're not uh, taking up room on the internal storage for that kind of stuff. Even if you run some uh, low, low end Steam games, you could also install those onto the card too to give yourself a little more space and your power adapter goes in there. And for battery life, you get about six to eight hours depending on what you're doing with it. So if you are playing a lot of games or watching a lot of movies, and gaming is very limited on this thing, by the way, as you'll see in a minute, uh, you will eat up that battery faster than you will if you're just doing word processing and web browsing. So if you're doing web browsing and typing in some things into the computer, nothing too strenuous, you'll be closer to eight hours. If you're doing more than that, you'll be more on the six hour or less side. 
All right, let's take a look at some performance here. We're going to load up my uh, 1080p 60 video that I often test on my YouTube channel. We're gonna use the Edge browser for this though because Edge is much more efficient with web video uh, than Chrome is. There are times you may wanna run Chrome for other web browsing, but uh, for video, I still recommend the Edge browser over Chrome because it's able to play back these videos smoothly uh, with no drop frames. So if we go over here to our Stats for Nerds, uh, you can see here it's playing back this 1080p 60 frames per second video with no drop frames. It's keeping up with everything uh, just fine and in many ways it feels a little faster than uh, last year's model because it has more RAM and I want to give you an example of what it means to have more memory in a computer because uh, it really can result in a decent performance increase and I'm going to show you a screen now where I've got a, another low-end computer same computer one with two gigs of RAM and the other one with four and you can see on the left that the Minecraft game and the video running it's really not doing all that well the video is really stuttering unable to keep up uh, the memory is maxed out around 92% or so if not not completely maxed out, uh, whereas the computer on the right with four gigabytes of RAM uh, is able to do both things at the same time. And that's because the RAM is able to get things in and out of that processor quickly. And when you have more RAM, you can get more data processed at the same time. Uh, the other thing that's happening too is that uh, RAM does better in pairs. So usually the way these are configured is they have two two gigabyte chips that can run in tandem with each other and get data in and out uh, much faster than a two gigabyte machine can do with a single chip. So it really does uh, perform much better in uh, many tasks, especially when you have a lot of things up on the screen. It still will suffer a bit on uh, websites here, like I'll pull up the New York Times as an example. Um, it will bog down a bit because there's so much processing involved with all the scripts and the, all the ads and everything else that load up on the page. So you might see some uh, laggy performance, especially when you first pop into the site during the day because it loads up all these big, huge uh, ads with a lot of code behind them and a lot of different connections to make. It will be faster than a, a two gigabyte laptop at the same price point but you will definitely uh, notice that this will take a little longer to load up than it might on your fancier desktop computer or perhaps a uh, tablet that might cost a little more. But uh, you're able to get in there and uh, browse some things as you're going through your daily web browsing. This is where an ad blocker, unfortunately, will allow for more efficient web browsing because it will get rid of all this extra stuff loading and give you a much faster experience, especially on lower end hardware. And on the Octane benchmark test, which gives us a numeric score that we can use to compare, we got 8,300. 79 compared to 7,266 on last year's model running with the same processor. So clearly uh, having more memory and having an additional channel of memory brings about much better performance. And when you're dealing with a low end machine like this, every little bit means a lot. And this is what we're seeing here with uh, this added RAM. And also take a look at the other two computers I have on the list there, the Dell Inspiron 11 3000 and the Toshiba, uh, both again running with the same chip, but only two gigabytes of RAM. This one bests all of them. So this is really an area where having more memory here is going to make a big difference and certainly why you'll want to get this version versus last year's. Now more than likely you will be doing this on the computer working on Word documents and it does seem to be uh, doing quite well given the price tag here. So I like to use this newsletter template because there is a lot of text and graphics and a lot of formatting to be done. Uh, it seems to be scrolling very smoothly as I'm going through it. It doesn't feel as laggy as it might feel on a machine with two gigabytes of RAM. So you are able to get your work done a little bit faster on here. It still won't be as fast as maybe be like an i3 or an i5 based computer that costs more but uh, as you can see here it really does perform nicely and much better than last year's version and this is not a gaming machine by any stretch of the imagination but a lot of people write in asking about minecraft and it does run minecraft fairly well and this is the version that uh, most people run which is the java based version uh, we're getting decent frame rates actually very consistently too so we're seeing uh, right now 50 frames per second which is on the higher end of what you will experience on here uh, typically it's around 30 or 40 frames per second uh, it will dip down a bit as it has to load in new elements when you go uh, beyond what it has queued up already. But I found it to be much better than last year's version. Again, having that extra RAM uh, really does make a difference on uh, performance, especially with games like this. There's another version of Minecraft called Win the Windows 10 Minecraft, uh, which will run better on here, but most people run the version you just saw. I am running with a plugin called Optifine, which is really something that's important to get Minecraft to work at the uh, speed that you just saw it. So it will do Minecraft with a little tweaking, so that's a good thing. It will not run games like you might see on your Xbox One or PS4 that also have PC versions. So Grand Theft 
Auto 5 and all the games in that class uh, will not function on here at all. But there are some games on the Steam platform that do run pretty nicely and I want to show you a couple of them right now. So on the Steam platform there are a bunch of indie games like this one called Shovel Knight that I really don't push the hardware all that much but are a ton of fun to play. So I think these kind of casual games uh, will do quite well. Another thing to look for on the Steam platform are older games, things that are around a decade or so old. I know it's a long time ago but old games can be kind of fun still also and this is one called uh, Lego Star Wars. This was available on the old uh, Xbox, the original Xbox and uh, the GameCube and the PS2 and this actually runs really nicely on here at a full 60 frames per second. So uh, if you look at some of the really old stuff that's on the platform and again some of the more casual titles you'll have a pretty good gaming experience but if you have somebody that's really into the current and the latest stuff uh, this is not the computer for them but uh, the older stuff will run pretty nicely. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test which gives us a number to compare against like the Octane test uh, we get a score of 1,556 and this is slightly better than we saw with last year's computer again because we've got an extra channel of RAM uh, which can get data flowing over to the processor and its graphics processor faster than what we saw last year. But it's still not good enough again to run uh, modern games, but it will run the games that it can run better than a two gigabyte equipped machine can do. And the sound quality on here isn't so bad either considering the price tags. So you've got stereo speakers, nice separation here. Uh, they are downward facing, so they, the sound quality gets impacted by the surface that they're on, but uh, they are very loud. They don't sound all that great, but better than I've seen in many $200 computers there, so the, the sound is uh, not too bad out of there. Display isn't too bad either, just a little on the cold side, a little more blue than I would like, but uh, passable for a $200 computer. And all together, it's a pretty nice little machine. It's completely quiet. It's fanless. Uh, it is very lightweight, and I think the addition of uh, two gigabytes of additional RAM to bring it to four is a really welcomed improvement on low-end hardware like this. So again, if you are out looking for an HP Stream 11, make sure you're getting the one with four gigs of RAM, because right now I'm seeing the old version with half the RAM for the same price and this is a nice performance boost for free essentially uh, over the price you would have paid for the old one. This is Lon Sybin, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.